lovely, lovely imps. Today, we have to talk about a funny little website known as Reddit. The Narwhal Beacons at Midnight! Did any of you understand that? Did any of you understand my secret code? Many of you would not. But perhaps you do. Perhaps you are a member of the esoteric order of the snooze. The snooze, are there any snooze out there? Are there any editors? Are there any snooze? Are there any baconers? Bacon narwhals at midnight, everybody. They bacon at midnight. The narwhals do, okay? All right, I'm being uh, I'm I'm being a little cruel to the website that I'm about to talk about, um, but uh, guys, a bunch of stuff has been going on with Reddit. Why should anybody care? First of all, well, I'm actually going to be even though I was goofing on Reddit and making some jokes about in jokes about Reddit from way ages ages ago. Um, I actually have to take a moment and say something kind about Reddit. Okay. Reddit has a bit of a reputation for being a nerd hotspot of the most insufferable type. Uh, Reddit has cultivated a reputation for know-it-alls, uh, fedora-tipping atheists, uh, people saying really weird things that are out of pocket and whatever. However, with all of that said, with all of that said, Reddit actually has one really strong thing going for it. Okay, one really strong thing going for it. And that is the fact that it is a text searchable place where lots of real people actually hang out in user created and user curated uh, uh, spaces. So why do each of those things matter? Well, one, the user curation and the user creation uh, creation means that each subreddit, you know, each you know smaller page on the the larger Reddit page, has the ability to be devoted with with to a certain topic or set of topics with its own little set of rules, and you can choose to leave or enter at your own uh, at your own leisure. This means that people have a lot of control over what they're engaging with. They have a lot of say in what they get to see, um, and they can find things, you know, fairly easy because there's communities for basically everything. Uh, you want to talk about video games very generally? You go to the games subreddit. You want to talk about a specific game? Most games that you can think of will have a subreddit devoted to that game where you can find other fans of that game, information about that game, and often help fixing problems with that game. And so they've got this whole user user curation and user creation thing going for it. And secondly, the other part that I mentioned, text searchable. People really underestimate the value of, uh, of things being text searchable uh, over the last few years. Well, some people do, other people don't. Some of you are enlightened and wise already. Um, over the last, 10 years or so, uh, actually closer to like, I guess, six or seven years, there has been a massive shift online. I'm not gonna get into the politics of this. All I'll say is that it was, uh, it was started on very, very questionable data. But online, there was a shift to video, um, and audio and images over text. And the problem with a shift to websites prioritizing video, audio, and images over text is that it becomes very difficult to find anything. Let me give you an example. If I right now make a video uh, where I talk about a specific issue with a specific product, while it is possible for me to title the video, uh, you know, whatever thing, there's no guarantee that you're actually going to, that I'm like, the, the title is going to be 100% accurate to what you're searching for. If you can't describe the problem perfectly, you might not find the title. If I don't title it very effectively, you might not find it, and you can't search the content of the video. So if the video is about something you're looking for, but the title doesn't encapsulate everything perfectly within SEO, you can't find what's in the video. The video might be literally
literally designed to help you with whatever you're trying to do. Maybe you're trying to fix something in your car. Maybe you're trying to fix a problem with a game. Maybe you're trying to find a new game to play. But the videos aren't easily searchable. Uh, most videos don't have a searchable transcript. Um, the ones that do, uh, that transcript is often imperfect because transcripting is extremely fraught and has lots of issues. So there's been this problem over the last, you know, half a decade to a decade or so of the internet becoming increasingly harder to search because people are putting everything in videos. Some of you will have encountered what I'm about to talk about directly, okay? Um, how many of you have gone to look for something on the internet and then you just find basically a bunch of articles that are vaguely about what you're talking about and then when you click on the article it's actually a slideshow of images with ads in between on an on a web page that's loaded with ads and you're just trying to figure out real quick how to fix something or how to do something or whatever and you are suddenly in this laggy slideshow of images where everything that you want to know is spread across 16 pages of images with ads in between Yeah, terrible, right? So Reddit is a text-focused site. They do allow the posting of videos. They do allow the posting of images, of course. They even allow the posting of slideshows. However, the site is largely focused on text. And even when people do post videos, because the comments of that are are in plain text, they're, well, they're in HTML, but because they're easily searchable, even when somebody does post a video on Reddit, you can often find the video that you need very, very quickly. And in fact, it's really funny. If I were to uh, go right now on Google, I mean, let's see how to fix your toilet, okay? If you go on Google right now and you search Sorry, wrong button. I apologize, one of my buttons broke. Um, you're gonna get a bunch of ads for plumbers, and then you'll notice you get an, an Ace Hardware sponsored video on how to fix a toilet that's trying to pull information from, a, from the transcript of a video, and in fact, it's put me at minute 120 of this video, which is a little odd. Then we get a blog that's a, a listicle, then we get a whole bunch of additional video links, how to fix a running toilet guaranteed, how to repair toilet. All of this is just like, okay. And if you add one word, you all of a sudden have a whole bunch of easy articles specifically talking about their problems in text form that you don't have to worry about scrubbing through videos, you don't have to worry about hopping uh, anywhere else. You just, here's the thing, flapper at the bottom may have algae or lime buildup. Turn off the water source at the back, then clean it. All you had to do was add Reddit, okay? Now, obviously, you can still sometimes search things and find what you're looking for, but you'll notice that when I search just how to fix your toilet, most of the stuff here, add, 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 Add for a plumber, add for a plumber, add for a plumber. A sponsored video by Ace Hardware. A personal blog. And then a bunch of listicles that are loaded with ads. If you go to Reddit, it's just your thing that you're looking for. I hope that explains, it, you know, relatively succinctly why the text searchable uh, uh, nature of Reddit is uh, very important. So all of these things have made Reddit very, very popular in recent years as more and more people turn to listicles, slideshows, videos, blah, 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 all of these ads and etc. Oh yes, of course, Fortnite points out that nowadays a lot of those listicles are written by AI and might not even have the information you're looking for. They might just be like inhuman nonsense that you have to slog through while getting served a bunch of pop-up ads. It's pretty bad. It's pretty rough, okay? Um, so Reddit has kind of been the last holdout of easy to find information to the degree that like it actually makes Google more usable when you're searching on Reddit. Almost every single time I have an issue with a video game 
or a piece of software, I will search problem I'm having Reddit and I will find the solution almost instantly. Whereas if I just search the solution, instead I get a bunch of advertisements for people trying to sell me a service so that they can steal my credit card while pretending to fix my problem. So Reddit is one of the last like sort of holdouts of easily searchable information. But Reddit has some problems. Reddit is a privately owned corporation um, it is actually owned by a giant media conglomerate now, has been for some time. And Reddit is not exactly the most like profitable service ever. It's a user-driven site and they do sell ads on there and they have a premium version that you can purchase, but it's not like the most profitable website in the world. You know, it makes money, but it's not like the most pop profitable in the world. And um, recently, the CEO of Reddit made uh, an announcement that they were going to try to make more money with Reddit. And the way that they were going to do this was by following in Elon Musk's footsteps with what Elon Musk did at Twitter. Now, I've done some videos on Twitter. Y'all can just search my channel if you want to see what I, me talking about the history of the changes at Twitter and how Twitter has completely and utterly cratered in recent months. Uh, but, you know, just let's just say for the purposes of this video, take my word, Twitter is in a very bad place right now. And one of the biggest problems that happened on Twitter is that Twitter decided to start charging an exorbitant fee for access to its API. Now, an API is something that a lot of people aren't super familiar with, but an API is basically, um, it is basically a, uh, uh, it's a, it's a socket. Like you can understand, you can imagine it as a socket that allows other people to basically plug in and get information from your website. And it's APIs are incredibly, incredibly useful. Okay, they allow for all kinds of amazing things. Uh, APIs are the type of things that allow you to um, like quickly check the weather without going to like a specific weather app, where you can set up like a plugin on your uh, on your computer that will pull from the weather services API and tell you immediately what the weather is going to be that day in a tiny little window on your desktop. There are so many things that are useful. Uh, APIs allow you to create useful, um, uh, useful bots and also unuseful bots, but allow you to create a au useful automation for websites. APIs allow you to analyze data from websites so that you can understand how that website is being used. They're really, really important. And APIs uh, as a as a concept as a thing um, are basically necessary for the entire function of the internet, but especially for user driven websites like Reddit. Reddit doesn't publish anything really. They have their own little admin blog where they tell you the changes they're making to the website, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. But Reddit itself doesn't actually do the what Reddit is all about. Everything that you engage with when you go to Reddit um, is, uh, is, is created by a user somewhere. There is a, 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 a person who is posting stuff that is useful to you or a group of people that are posting things that are useful to you uh, or a whole community of people posting all kinds of things that are useful to you. It is a user-driven website and as a result, uh, Access to the API means that people can use the website in a way that's important to them. Which brings us to the central crux of the entire thing that we're talking about with Reddit today, which is Reddit has decided to follow in the steps of Twitter and start to charge extremely high rates for access to their API. And this especially affects a handful of programs um, that are, I don't want to say 100% essential, but that are extremely, extremely important to a large portion of their uh, user base. Um, an example of this, hold on, let me bring this up, is the Apollo app. Uh, the Apollo app 
is a freely accessible uh, mobile uh, app that basically it's a custom U UI for accessing and reading and saving things on Reddit. Um, it is the most popular by far. Um, I've I've seen all kinds of, uh, of of estimates as far as how many people. The highest estimate I've seen is that like close to sixty percent of people on mobile, you, of of like regular Reddit mobile users use the Apollo app. Um, it is insanely insanely pop popular. Um, and uh, and. The way that it engages with the API is, by comparison, very low cost for how much value that it brings to Reddit. You see, Apollo allows a large number of people to use Reddit comfortably, which makes them stay on the site more, which makes them engage with the site more, which makes them create content which makes Reddit, which makes Reddit usable. People who make Reddit happen use Apollo because it works really well, and because Re Reddit's uh, native app is uh, is deemed by many to be inferior to this product. But you see, uh, they want to charge Apollo with their current change, following in the footsteps of Elon Musk, and 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 charging an incredible amount to access to their API. They want to charge Apollo so much that it would literally be impossible for this company to function. And now, I'm not 100% uh, sure of all of the um, of the details around Apollo, um, but uh, Apollo is made by a very small team, predominantly, I believe, just one guy. Um, the Apollo app is not like a huge team of people. It's a very small project that benefits an incredible amount of Reddit users. And Reddit has basically, they, and Apollo basically said, there's no possible way that we can uh, uh, afford this. For reference, I'm just pulling this up right here. And according to the current pricing, um, oh, here's the full post. Oh, awesome. We can actually see the Apollo uh, uh, developer's primary post um, talking about why he's going to close it down. Here we go. Let's actually read his post directly. Um, on April 18th, Reddit, Reddit announced changes that would be coming to the API, namely that the API is moving to a paid model for third-party apps. Shortly thereafter, we received phone calls. However, the price, the key element in an announcement of a move to paid API was notably missing, with the intent to follow up in uh, two to four weeks. The information they did provide to me, this right now, by the way, for those who are just coming in, this is the letter from the developer of Apollo. Apollo is one of the most popular Reddit apps. It is basically an app that makes Reddit easier to use for people. It has a ton of, of generally ease of access um, uh, uh, features for mobile. Uh, specifically, and a lot, like a staggering amount of people use Apollo as their primary way to access Reddit. Up to this point, there has not been a charge just for access to the API. So Apollo was free to create a, uh, uh, a, a extremely highly reviewed beloved app. I mean, hell, just look at this. This is people, these are people throwing their, uh, 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 their premium reactions, 214,000 upvotes on this post right here with all of these uh, <laughs> paid reactions. These are the things that you have to like, like put money in to get these reactions. You have to pay m a real money to put fancy reactions on these things. People love this app, okay? Anyway, that's where we're at right now. They mentioned that they were not looking to be like Twitter, which has an API pricing so high that it was publicly ridiculed. Let's wait. <laughs> I was excited to hear that statement as I agreed that the long-term Reddit footing the bill for third-party apps is probably not tenable. And with a paid arrangement, there's a great possibility for developing a more concrete relationship with Reddit with better API support for users. I think this, API, this optimism came across in my first post, which he links here, about the calls with Reddit. When did they announce the pricing? Okay. 
Six weeks later, they called to discuss pricing. I quickly put together a small app where I could input the prices and it would output the monthly yearly cost, cost for free users, pay users, etc. So I'd be able to process the information uh, immediately. The price they gave me was 24 cents for 1,000 API calls. Now this is a bit technical language, but basically an API call is any time that an app like uh, checks in with the website, which in case you're wondering, can happen a lot depending on the type of app. If it's an app that engages very intensely with, Re with the Reddit website, it can be a lot of API calls very quickly. That's something that can happen almost instantaneously. I quickly inputted this in my app and I saw that it was not far off from Twitter's outstandingly high API cr prices. At $12,000, with my current user usage, it would cost me almost $2 million for, per month or over $20 million per year. That is not an exaggeration. That is just multiplying the 7 billion requests that Apollo made last month by the price per request. Could I potentially get that number down? Absolutely, if I was given some time, but it's illustrative of the large cost that Apollo would be charged. So these small apps that have been functioning for free have expressed their willingness to, have to, to pay uh, some amount for access to the Reddit API, but the amount that they're being demanded to pay, which is going to start very soon, has turned out to be $2 million a month. Let me tell you something. Even if you have a successful app, and keep in mind Apollo is an app that is a free app for people to use and they can buy a premium version if they want to support, $2 million per month is an absolutely deranged cost for a small team to try and foot. That's an insane amount of money to ask uh, for someone to pay for an app that makes, that gives business to Reddit. Just remember that. At the end of the day, the Apollo app benefits Reddit by a large margin. So let's hear his reasoning here. Why do you say that Reddit's pricing is too high? By what metric? metric? Reddit's promise was that the pricing would be equitable and based in reality. The reality that they themselves have posted data about for years is as follows. Less than two years ago, they said they crossed $100 million in quarterly revenue for the first time ever. So they're making $100 million uh, every three months. If we assume the economic downturn that they've managed to do that every single quarter now, and for your best quarter, you've doubled it to 200 million, let's also be generous and go far, far above industry estimates and say you made another $50 million just from Reddit premium subscriptions. That's $550 million in revenue per year. And if we want to be fair, round up to an even $600 million. In, t in 2019, they said they hit 430 million active users. And also to be generous, let's say they haven't added a single active user since then. If we do revenue, revenue per user calculations, the more user, the, the less revenue each user would contribute. So at generous estimates of $600 million and 430 million active users, which is this is generous to Reddit, that's $1 per user per year or 12 cents monthly. These own numbers they've given are also seemingly in line with industry estimates as well. Apollo's price would then be pr approximately $2.50 per month per user, with Reddit's indicated cost being only $12 per their own numbers. Do you understand what's going on here? If you do the math, they're asking an app that benefits Reddit to pay $2.50 a month per user when Reddit itself uh, is, only is only actually incurring a cost of 12 cents per user. That is just a ridiculous ask. They are basically, it's, it's a ridiculous, it's a ridiculous ask. Uh, we'll pay 12 cents and you pay $2.50. How about, uh, that's like what? That's like 20 times as much? D deranged. Yeah, 20 times. Yep, here he says. I didn't even read that. A 20 time increase does not seem based in reality to me. Why doesn't Reddit just buy Apollo and other third party apps? 
This was a very common, cop, co uh, very common comment across the topics. If Apollo has an apparent opportunity cost of $20 million per year, why not just buy them and other third-party apps as they did with Alien Blue? Alien B Blue is an earlier app that Reddit already bought and incorporated into their pro product. So somebody had made Alien Blue, which was very popular. Reddit bought it and made it an in-house product. I believe this is a fair question. If these apps apparently cost so much, an easy solution that would likely make everyone ha happy would be to simply buy these apps out. So I brought that up to them during a call on the 31st when I was suggesting a variety of potential solutions. Bizarre allegations by Reddit of Apollo blackmailing and threatening Reddit. This is where things start to get really, really weird, okay? So we've talked about so far, we've talked about why Reddit is still an important website, even though people poke fun at it, and even I poke fun at Reddit sometimes. Still a very important and popular website. Uh, we've talked about now what changes that they're trying to make. They're trying to make changes to charge a lot, a lot of money uh, to access their API, which is predominantly going to benefit them both monetarily and that the apps that are being made for their user-driven website are bringing more users to the website. And then we get this third bit, okay? About 24 hours after the call with Reddit, I received an odd message on Mastodon. Can you please public commently about the internal Reddit claim that you tried to blackmail them for a $10 million payout to stay quiet? Then yesterday, moderators told me they were on a call with CEO of Reddit, Steve Huss Huffman, also known as Spez, and he said the following per their transcript. So uh, Steve says, Apollo threatened us. They said they'll make it easy if Reddit make gave them $10 million. This guy behind the scenes is trying to coerce us. He's threatening us. So this is a pretty big allegation from the CEO of Reddit, okay? And I'm not gonna go super, super far in. Um, <laughs> I'm not gonna go super, super far in to these allegations, but let's just say it's gotten way, way worse. That Reddit has doubled down on these allegations against the developer of Apollo and have provided no evidence that the Apollo developer ever did any such thing. Uh, which even let's just imagine that uh that the apollo app was being run by somebody who thought that they could um shake down reddit the apollo app is like this big and reddit is a fucking 600 million dollar per year company the apollo app here Reddit here, even if this guy was a total nutball, the idea that he was threatening them is insane. That's like, I don't even know. I don't even know what an equivalent would be. That's deranged. That's absurd. Now, of course, uh, everyone involved with this ha uh, has said, no, of course, uh, uh, you know, no, no, uh, of course this seems, uh, you know, you know, this is, of course, ridiculous. Um, but, of course, things have spiraled out from here. Because despite um, not just app developers complaining about the changes to Reddit, um, users have also begun to complain. Because, of course, many of the users use these apps to access Reddit in the first place. So all of these users, and again, I have to reassert, users are what make Reddit work. Reddit is a user-created website. The content is not made by Reddit. Not, like next to, like literally none of it. Like there might be, you might be able to say like a post is made by Reddit admins. A, uh, you know, a, a Q and A session is made by them. But 99.9% .9 of all content on Reddit is created by users of the website. Users who use these apps so that they can use the website. And now tons of these apps are saying, we literally can't afford, we're going to have to shut the door on our app, which makes users very angry. And that brings us to what happened over the last week. Over the last week, Reddit 
has had has gone dark. Okay, I believe it started. Uh, let me just let me just check the date real quick. Reddit went dark starting on the the twelfth on the night of the twelfth. Reddit, uh, a, a number of subreddits, the biggest, some of the biggest subreddits on the website all agreed that they were going to go dark. They were going to shut the doors to their subreddit for a set period of time. And I believe the initial estimate was 48 hours. Some of these subreddits have decided to extend their protest, but um, we're talking in the numbers of thousands the the estimate that i'm seeing here from uh engadget is six thousand communities went dark our community went dark in solidarity uh even though our community is very very tiny our reddit you know the demon mama reddit is very very small but we decided to to, to stand in solidarity as we do and and uh black out ours but uh, 6,000 communities on Reddit decided to go dark for 48 hours, and some of them have not come back. Um, and this was basically because the the CEO refused to budge on the pricing, and people were saying, this is going to kill our communities. We have, like, our, we're going to lose users that, that make our communities work. You're going to lose users who make this website worth going to, and you're doing it for a quick cash grab. Which is a wild thing to consider that Reddit would even do this. Because again, like I said, Reddit is not like the richest, most profitable website in the entire history of the world, but they're pulling in $600 million a year. That's a lot of money. They're not exactly um, hurting for cash, okay? And what they're trying to do is squeeze small app developers for $20 million. That's, that's wild. If you just think about on a matter of fraction what they are asking small app developers to pay to make their own site better. Just just absurd mental gymnastics that of course pissed off a lot of the users. And yes, as everyone is pointing out, they are planning to go public this year, which means that they will be a publicly traded company where you can buy Reddit stock, which means they have an incentive to bump up the valuation by any means necessary. And apparently in the mind of the CEO, that means shaking down app developers for as much money as they can possibly get at the cost of the users, at the cost of the community, at, a co at the cost of the usability of the website. Wild, isn't it? Yes, we're going to talk about that. I was just about to talk about that. So, um, so a ton of, of, uh, of, 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 subreddits went down and in fact if you happen to search for something like i was talking about earlier over the last few days on the 12th or the 13th and even under the 14th if you tried to search things on google um and try to find something on reddit you would be met with a a a an error page a page that says sorry this community is locked you can't access it and it became a huge issue for reddit However, what we're about to read is a leaked memo from within a confirmed leaked memo from within Reddit, okay? And I want you to understand like exactly how this CEO uh, is talking about his own website, his own community on a, again, user created website. This guy is an admin and nothing more. His users create everything that the company is worth from top to bottom. If the users stopped making posts on Reddit, the website would die instantly. Even a small downturn in user in use usage of the website could lead to a spiral. You guys, real quick, many of you who are who still for some reason post and hang out on Twitter, you guys know what it's like on Twitter right now, right? Like the death spiral that has happened since a couple of months ago. 
there's way less posts on Twitter. The content fucking sucks. More and more people are bailing on Twitter by the day. The power users aren't there anymore. The people who are posting the funniest shit. There's no memes on Twitter anymore. Nobody's having a good time on Twitter anymore. You guys remember what happened to, to Tumblr when Tumblr banned all of their adult content? Remember how quickly Tumblr like cratered? The engagement on Twitter enter, uh, on Tumblr entered a death spiral. These websites thrive off of engagement between users. So keep all that in mind when we read the following statement. Okay, here we go. This is the internal memo from Reddit CEO, Steve Huffman. Hi, snooze. Now, for those of you who don't know what a snoo is, uh, a snoo is the little Reddit creature, this thing up here, that's called a snoo. And uh, in, they apparently refer to their Reddit to Reddit employees as snooze. So, you know, super, super, you know, he's very hip and with the times, you know? He's super there, it's great. Hi, snooze. Starting last night, about a thousand subreddits have gone private. We do anticipate that many of them will come back by Wednesday, as many have said as much. While we knew this was coming, it's a challenge nevertheless, and we have our work cut out for us. A number of snoos have been working around the clock, adapting to infrastructure strains, engaging with communities, and responding to the myriad issues related to this blackout. Thank you, team. So here he's acknowledging that it's been a mess. We have not seen any significant revenue impact so far, and we will continue to monitor. So you had a bunch of blackouts. <laughs> you had a bunch of <laughs> you had a bunch of blackouts, infrastructure strain, and a myriad issues that you had to spend on, but you haven't seen any revenue revenue issues. Okay, bro. But anyway, there's a lot of noise with this one. Among the noisiest we've ever seen. Imagine describing a massive user protest. Your users, the people who make your job a thing, the only people who actually create any value for your website, and just being like, wow, they're very noisy this time. Talk about despising your own user base. Talk about despising the people who make your... It literally is like a king. Oh, the rabble! Send out the knights! The rabble is getting louder! Please know that our teams are on it, and like all blowups on Reddit, this one will pass as well. The smugness here is off the charts. The most important things we can do right now are stay focused, adapt to challenges, and keep moving forward. We absolutely must ship what we said we would. That means they're not backing down at all. They're not going to make any changes. The only long-term solution is improving our product. And in the short term, we have a few up upcoming critical mod tool launches that we need to nail. While the two biggest third-party apps, Apollo and RIF, along with a number of others, have, plan, have said they plan to shut down at the end of the month, we are still in conversation with some of the others. And as I mentioned in my post last me week, we will exempt accessibility-focused apps and so far have agreements with Red Reader and Dystopia. I'm sorry to say this, but please be mindful of wearing Reddit gear in public. Some folks are really upset and we don't want you to be the object of their frustrations. Dude, oh my God. Holy, how, are you, is this guy for real? Everyone hide your snooze, hide your snooze. They're coming for us. Talk. First, he accuses a random guy, a tiny developer, of blackmailing, of, of blackmailing him and, and extorting him. And then he's like, hide your snooze, everybody. They're coming for the Redditors. My, it's, it's, it's like borderline cult shit. Like, I'm sorry, that is one of the most deranged things. Unless you have evidence that there are like axe murderers coming to kill Reddit people. Are you serious? You're talking about people being afraid of wearing their Reddit hoodie in San Francisco. Are you, talk about self-victimization. Holy moly. Again, we'll get through it. Thank you to all of you for helping us do so. 
So yeah, let's just say that uh, the Reddit fan, the the Reddit user base is not pleased at all uh, with the direction that this has gone. Uh, especially with the insanely smug tone of the internal memo that he really should have thought twice about. Because uh, I'm I'm not gonna lie, this is pretty brazen. This is like this is like a level of brazen that is like that we usually see from companies like uh, like uh, 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 Wizards of the Coast. Do you guys remember when I was covering Wizards of the Coast just being like, you guys are gonna eat this and, no and nobody cares? Remember when we were talking about the internal memos at Wizards of the Coast being like, yeah, we don't care. We'll just, um, we'll pretend to go back on it until they quiet down and then we'll implement it at a later date as if they're fan, as if they're like, they're, they're customers are truly stupid people who will just not care. And of course, they didn't they didn't even think twice about the fact that it was going to cause all of their third party uh, uh, partners to bail on them, which they have, by the way. Um, maybe we should do an update on that situation at some point. Just ridiculous. There's a lot of noise with this one. Among the noisiest we've ever seen, please know that our teams are on it, and like all blowups on Reddit, this one will pass as well. Imagine that level of of nothing that I do, no matter how much I spit on the user base, will matter. We'll get through all of it. They're going to eat whatever slop we put in front of them. Now look, I am a, I, as a random YouTuber, tend to make some fun of the Redditors, okay? But let me tell you this, that is simply not true, okay? We have watched Tumblr explode. We have watched Facebook explode. We have watched Google Plus explo explode. We've watched MySpace explode. And now, most recently, we've watched Twitter explode for the exact same reasons that this guy is citing and uh, that this guy is trying to push through right now. The idea that you're like some kind of an invincible site, that your profits are immune, and that you're gonna be totally okay is just simply not true. It is just not true. Like, like it or not, of course there's still a ton of people who uh, stick around and miserably spend time on dying social media apps. There are still people who are regularly posting on Tumblr to this day, but guess what? A handful of people who won't leave a platform do not carry a platform forward. Have you guys seen just how bad the losses are for um, uh, for Twitter? I want to see if I can find a number real quick. Uh, uh, this is, let's see, uh, where's the new, I want to see the newest one. Here we go. From just a couple days ago, the New York Times, Twitter Twitter's U.S. ad sales have plunged by over... 59% as woes continue. Musk has said openly that Twitter is on track to uh, to to post only $3 billion in revenue, down from $5.1 billion in revenue in 2021. So he's down by $2 billion losses. And that's that's with that's if we trust Elon Musk's number. More than half of Twitter's top 1,000 advertisers have stopped. They have lost 500 of their top 1,000 advertisers. Forbes reports, um, Twitter's ad sales are down 59% despite, despite, let me see here, despite uh, Musk saying that they're breaking even. So even, so basically every financial report is is casting doubt on Elon Musk's numbers. The idea that the Reddit CEO is so convinced that Reddit of all places, Reddit, the place with the most, with the most notoriously uh, <laughs> tight ass users on the internet. Sorry, sorry to all the Redditors out there. You guys have a reputation for being uh, very picky about your website. The idea that Reddit is somehow immune uh, to, uh, to losing out on anything is just hilarious to me. And uh, as it turns out, a lot of subreddits have decided to uh, not just come back online as they originally said, but said, but instead to stay offline. Oh wow! So this is just from today, right? Yeah, this is from this is from today. Okay, I guess this is breaking news. Wait, literally from this was just from a few hours ago. All right, let's read it. 
This is from Forbes. Breaking news. Reddit CEO pushes back against the blackout. Will let users vote out the moderators. Oh my God. Reddit CEO Steve Huffman fired back Thursday against the leaders of a days-long blackout on many of the site's subreddits in protest of planned changes to the company's API pricing. A small group of users are driving the protest and the company is considering making it easier for users to kick out their moderators. Huffman told NBC he plans to implement a system that would allow users to vote out the volunteer moderators who run subreddits, a proposed change that comes as many subreddits either remain dark or operate at a limited capacity in protest of Reddit's planned changes, drawing mixed reception from the site's users. Obviously, that's deranged. Guys, okay, this is the one of the most, that is the most deranged thing you can possibly imagine. <laughs> The moderators, the people who actually make a place that actually keep the subreddit functioning, being voted out by random users. Just keep in mind, there is no, there is no barrier to entry for any users. On a, on a Reddit, anybody can make a Reddit account. You could have a swarm of people, just of bots, swarm in to vote out the moderators who've lovingly kept a place running for years, who've built a community in a place. On one of the largest subs, he promoted the one moderator that didn't approve the back out to the lead moderator, who then proceeded to kick everyone else out. These polls are going to be rigged as fuck. Oh my god, that is deranged! This is going to destroy- this is- there's- how the- how is the website going to survive this? I might actually have to delete my Reddit. The idea that, that people could come in and vote out the moderators of a Reddit that's branded under my name? I might just have to delete my subreddit. Oh my god. This is gonna be so bad. Oh my god, that's terrible. That also just opens up a huge amount of issues for abuse. If you vote out all of the, uh, any trusted moderators and any any asshole can scroll in and become the the moderator, you could just have complete hijacks of communities based from power users. Power users who have tons of followers could just swing in, take over entire communities. This is horrible. This is actually, this is new. I didn't even know about this. I, I, I saw some people mentioning this in chat, but I hadn't read anything about this at this point. This is deranged. Currently, Reddit moderators can only be removed if they're, from their positions by higher ranked monitors or by Reddit itself for pol policy violations or, or inactivity. Obviously, the CEO said the pathway out is actually more democracy. That's not more democracy, my man. That, you, it's not democracy on a site where anybody can create a hundred accounts. That's not democracy, my man. You are, you are literally bending the system so that you can get your way. That's not democracy, you scumfuck. Oh my god. What? That is the slimiest thing. Huffman didn't specify when a new policy would go into effect, but he argued generally that moderators should be accountable to users rather than staying in place and wielding extensive power over their subreddits like landed gentry. I wonder what that says about the CEO whose job is to sit on his ass and over a website that is made by the users. I wonder what that says about you, my man. Oh my God. Okay. Oh my god. I'm I, this is it. This is it everybody. I'm declaring in favor of the redditors. All of my solidarity goes to the redditors. Redditors abandon the hell out of that website. You guys cannot take this stuff, okay? I am not a Reddit user, okay? Except for when I'm searching for a technical problem, which I'm sure gonna miss. Uh, but uh, but you guys who are the Redditors in the audience, you guys can't take this. This is, that is, that is embarrassing. Describing volunteer mods as landed gentry because they can't be voted out by random ass users who could be bots, who could be day old accounts. 
Is that cra that's crazy? That's crazy. That's an insane thing to say. The CEO said in a separate interview with NPR that the blackout led by a quote unquote small group has not cost the money all that much, but it did create a fair amount of trouble. Hmm. Reddit's new API fees will charge third party apps for access to site data, a change developers have said will force them to shut down due to millions of dollars it would take to continue operating. But the company argues it will prevent third party companies from using Reddit's content without paying for it or allowing ads. Reddit has said it will not go back on its planned changes, but Huffman noted the company is willing to negotiate with most third-party developers. Oh, here we go. The blackout over Reddit's upcoming API changes took off on Monday with more than 8,000 subreddits participating. This meant the millions of users who followed the pages either had limited access or no access at all to some of their favorite pages. The move has continued into Thursday with more than 5,000 of the 8,000 that entered the blackout still remaining dark. That's a pretty good percentage, actually. I'm surprised by that. The protest was planned to end on Wednesday for most subreddits before an internal company memo published by The Verge was leaked. That's the one we read. It revealed messages to Reddit employees informing them that the blackouts did not have a significant impact and that the company expected it to pass. The memo became a primary driver behind continued blackouts from subreddits, some of which have followed different timelines for their respective blackouts, which has raised the ire of some users. Third-party developers like Apollo and Reddit is fun, which produce apps that provide users with alternative Reddit interfaces, plan to shut down at the end of June due to the API pricing changes. Apollo founder Christian Selig said his team would incur a cost of $20 million a year if the app was kept online after the changes are implemented. Huffman told NPR that though Reddit is willing to negotiate with most developers, negotiation with Apollo and Reddit is fun have broken, have broken down. Oh my God. That is off the, that is off the rails. This is, this is like, this is like as bad as Twitter's meltdown. Reddit CEO Steve Huffman, it's time we grow up and behave like an adult company. <laughs> Yeah, dude! This is your idea? Oh my god, literally a child who thinks they're an adult. We need to start acting like an adult. We need to act like an adult. Hide your snooze, everybody. We need to act like an adult um, uh, by scoffing down at the users who make our careers possible. The literal only thing that we can do is uh, squeeze our most avid users to death and tell them that democracy, meaning only people who support me will be allowed to keep positions of power. Oh my God. Oh my God. The rallying cry of the backlash has been don't let Reddit kill third party apps. Oh my God. Human beings talk about interesting things on Reddit. We are not in the business of giving that away for free. M my man, do you, are you listening to yourself? Human beings talk about interesting things. You don't. You're not the one giving that away for free. It's the human beings that you rent fucking rent seek off of that's giving you stuff for free. You don't make any content. Why don't you post some interesting things? Why don't you fill up thousands of pages with content? Oh my God. And it has ads. It's not free anyway. There's ads all over Reddit and premium. Incredible. Absolutely incredible. Huffman says, we are 18 years old. It's time we grow up.
I think it's time we grow up and behave like an adult company. My man. My man. So, uh, yeah. Guys, uh, things are not going good for the website Reddit. Okay, Reddit, things are not looking good for Reddit. Okay, I'm just going to be completely honest. If that was me, if I was a Redditor, I'd be out of there. Okay, I, uh, for, for example, when Twitter got taken over by Elon Musk, I moved over elsewhere. And while I still occasionally post on Twitter, my Twitter engagement has gone down so much, it's not even funny. Like, I spend almost no time on Twitter. I don't even have Twitter on my phone anymore. I literally got rid of it off my phone because it was, it becomes so crappy. Uh, tons and tons, like, I mean, there's not, none of the power users are posting on Twitter. None of the people who made Twitter Twitter are posting anymore because it just sucks too much. The only remaining ones are the worst accounts imaginable and a bunch of bots that are trying to sell you Bitcoin scams by purchasing a, a fake blue check. Uh, if I was a Reddit user, I would be out of there like crazy. I would be out of that site like nothing. Oh my God, what a mess. Twitter, Reddit, Discord, Tumblr, Facebook, everyone seems to be deciding to death spiral. Yeah, uh, there was a great article. Actually, Vosh was reading it the other day because a, a wise demon recommended it. Uh, but it's an article by Cory Doctorow called The Enshittification of T TikTok, or also sometimes called The Enshittification of the Internet. Fantastic article. Uh, and uh, I, I recommend that article. We've talked about literally everything that that article talks about, how uh, there's this cycle of selling out, selling out users, then selling out business partners, uh, and then ultimately just selling out the website entirely until it becomes a husk of what it, what it once was, which is a cycle that these companies have, fo have followed um, it, with shocking precision for the last few years. And it's made the internet horrible. Uh, at, nobody spends time on Facebook anymore. Nobody spends time on MySpace anymore. Nobody spent, less and less people are spending time on Twitter. And soon nobody's going to be spending time on Reddit either, it seems. It's, uh, whew. YouTube already completed the cycle and got away with it. Do you think they will do it a second time? Um... YouTube is uh, in a weird place because YouTube basically can't have any competitors at this moment. There's no competitor to YouTube. And part of the reason why things are so rough on YouTube at times and the ad, ad sharing has gotten really, really rough and YouTubers make no money uh, by comparison to how they used to after, uh, is, is partially because there's no real competitor to YouTube, at least not yet. Um, as it turns out, if you're the only company providing a service that is essential for a lot of people, um, you can get away with a lot of bad behavior. But Reddit is not unique. It's not hard to create an alternative version of Reddit. And in fact, it's already been done. Reddit was the alternative to a previous website called Dig. Some of you might remember Dig. Uh, Dig was Reddit before Reddit. And Dig failed massively. It caved in on itself and everybody moved over to Reddit because uh, as it turns out, link aggregation websites are not exactly the most difficult thing to create or produce. Uh, and Dig is like, no, there's, I don't even think, does, is Dig even, does Dig even exist at all? Oh yeah, it does still exist technically. It has 25 employees now, oops. Oh, it's just a news page now. Oh my god. It's just like a BuzzFeed clone now. It used to be like Reddit. Now it's just a, uh, a, a news page. D how a dose of MDMA transformed a white supremacist. Uh, what? Uh, what?
Cherry Anarchist says, I do want to push back on one thing. Tumblr didn't fully die. It had to bow to Apple and Sesta Fosta. The site has been growing quite a lot, and it has switched to a user-supported system. If you know how to use it, it's pretty damn good. I, I hear what you're saying. I, I hear what you're saying. But also, um, Tumblr really did die. Tumblr really got clapped. It's cool that it's bounced back, which is a rare thing, admittedly. And I'm glad that it's switching its model and and uh, you know might might has a shot at bouncing back, um, but it died. It definitely died. It, it definitely it, Tumblr before was one of the most popular sites, uh, like social media sites on the web, and it cratered. So I, I hear what you're saying, but yeah. At the moment, every social media site is a complete time bomb. Yeah, it's uh. Well, yeah, at the current moment, it is. And part of it is because um, every single one of them is these privately owned companies where the users are the product. Um, these websites, these, this is what we were talking about earlier about the, the nightmare negativity spiral, right? Um, in that segment, remember how I was talking about how these sites increasingly uh, uh, want their users to live their entire lives on the website as if it's an end goal in and of itself. Well, that's a problem. That's a huge problem as it turns out because you can't eat pictures of food. You can't uh, visit uh, pictures of a cool vacation spot. Your body exists. We don't, we're not just spirits flying through space and time on the internet. Um, these there's only so much you can squeeze out of users before they just say this isn't worth it anymore and then you have a death spiral you have a website that spirals because nobody wants to ha nobody's having fun anymore nobody's enjoying the website and the users that were making a place lively uh leave for greener pastures Proving Beetle 16 says, capitalism is always going to screw over websites. These sites need to be publicly owned uh, uh, property operated by the community. Hierarchy ensures unpopular decisions get passed, and the majority has no say in what happens. The internet would be a much better place if capitalism wasn't the core, well, it didn't exist. I mean, uh, yeah, um, obviously capitalism, the, 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 the profit-seeking nature of private corporations under capitalism is absolutely core to this cycle. Now, uh, publicly owned property, uh, like state owned uh, social media does not sound like a perfect solution to me. However, uh, I think we can acknowledge um, that the privately owned uh, uh, the privately owned model leads to just massive damage to communities, massive loss of information. Guys, okay, just one one last thing to think about, okay? I talked about this with regard to Twitter, and it's one of the actual most sad things. We all can poke fun at Facebook collapsing and Google blundering and all of, It's funny to laugh at these corporations, but I, I want you to remember something that there are human connections, there is art, there is human experience that gets forever lost when these companies go down the drain. There are entire actual communities that people form in spite of the, uh, of the horrible way these websites are created. There is uh, incredible uh, uh, l actual literal works of art. There are some of the most useful information that you will ever find in your entire life, essential information that gets completely and utterly lost when these websites uh, go belly up because of the dumbest profit-seeking decisions ever from stupid CEOs. Um, a lot of these sites are deliberately difficult to archive. A lot of these sites are completely, uh, they don't give a shit about the history of the, of, of the, uh, of the space. They don't actually care about their users in any way. They simply see dollar signs. So um, it's not just, you know, your favorite fun website that gets disappeared uh, in the end. It's, it's, there's real damage that is done by these companies going this way. And uh, it would be cool if 
this wasn't the way the internet has gone. Uh, you know, we talked earlier about how the internet was like at one point perceived as this just incredible and almost boundless tool of boundless potential, that it would be something that would constantly enhance our lives. And now it's like five websites that make everyone miserable and just exploit the users to no end. Isn't that pathetic? That this is what the internet has come to? That the internet, a tool that allows humans all across the globe to be connected with each other instantaneously, to share information, images, art, data, knowledge, at unbelievable degrees, boils down to uh, uh, tw Twitter, Facebook, YouTube, and Reddit. Man, what a, what a, what a depressing, <laughs> what a depressing state of affairs, yeah? Uh, I feel like it can be better than this, but I think that it's going to have to take a serious cultural change among the average user of the internet. And I don't know if that's, I don't know if we're there yet. I don't know if we're there yet. I would hate a future where the only purpose of the internet is just a giant pipe to blast ads into your face and to manipulate you uh, to buy product via other more sinister means that aren't actually advertisements, but they are, but they don't look like advertisements. And it already feels like that. So much of the internet is just plastered with buy product, buy product, buy product, buy product, buy product. And it's, it's like they're moving to these models where you have... TikTok and YouTube are increasingly pressuring for models where you basically take your hands off completely and allow them to just feed you whatever they want. You, have you guys ever scrolled through the shorts algorithm on YouTube or the TikTok for you page? It's literally a pipe that you have no control over except for saying, ah, ha, 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 or uh, and that's it. All you get to do is, is cry at the jangling keys or laugh at the jangling keys. And other than that, a faceless entity is just feeding shit into your into your brain terrible absolutely terrible also let me just say the shorts algorithm or the shorts is like one of the most exploitative things ever people grind out these shorts and they get nothing it's crazy how little you get from shorts oh man Anyway, enjoy what you get while you can. You love the fact that you can come watch Demon Mama for five hours and laugh and have fun and learn interesting things and find out about the news. Enjoy it while you can and press that like button, okay? You know, you're lucky. You're lucky that you're participating in a non-algorithmic, mostly non-algorithmic portion of the internet. You come seek out something that interests you. You come back to something that is that is interesting and important to you. Enjoy that and smack that like button and make sure you tell your friends. I unironically though, telling your friends, bringing back word of mouth is something that I think is going to become increasingly important. In fact, I believe it is unironically going to become one of the only ways to meaningfully find anything. Um, uh, 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 how often do you actually get like, it's so, it's so unlikely. It's so uncommon these days for algorithms to deliver you anything that you actually enjoy. It's so rare. Occasionally they do. Uh, some places where if you spend a crazy amount of time, you might get an algorithmic recommendation based on like loose associations, but usually it's direct, it's direct re reference. A lot of my viewers early on came from other content creators going, hey, go check out this person. I think you'll like their stuff. And everybody else, like now YouTubers are constantly having to struggle against a faceless algorithm and we don't even get to know how it works. They, in fact, they, they have to not let you know how it works because if you know how the algorithm works, well, then you can cheat the algorithm. 
So you have to be left in the dark, which means that all YouTubers who want to grow, they have to do this weird dance to, to the tune of an eldritch being that you can't understand, that deliberately avoids being understood. It's a messed up system. It's not healthy for anyone. Bring, bring back word of mouth. Bring back recommending to people who you care about other things that you care about. Bring back passionate sharing of things. I mean it. Uh, the good news is, everybody, don't doom out too hard, okay? I'm just gonna wrap this segment up real quick. Don't doom out too hard. And the reason why I'm saying don't doom out too hard is because at the end of the day, we already know how to tell each other about stuff. Even if all these algorithms become useless, which they already are. We were just talking earlier on about how useless Google has become. Google is the king of search engine algorithms and their website has become useless because AI can fucking pepper, pepper out SEO bait articles that mean nothing. And then Google will basically be like, ah, yes, this is mu must be what you're looking for. And then it's like a uh, AI cake recipe that tells you to use like, uh, like ball bearings or something like, uh, nah, like at the end of the day, this stuff is breaking itself. And as long as we don't let it break our minds, as long as we remember how to actually, you know, connect with one another, we'll be just fine. We are actually stronger than these machines. You are hearing the signal. Make sure you press subscribe down below and please share with me your thoughts. Do you, are you a Reddit user? Are you mad about the Reddit changes? Do you have thoughts? Do you disagree with me? Tell me in the comments below. You'll not only be doing me a favor, but I love reading and responding to comments, believe it or not. So leave them below. Thank you very much for watching and much love. Keep listening for the signal.